All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. This one is kind of like part three, I guess, of my race condition series. If you haven't seen my last two videos, go check those out. They kind of step are stepping stones to lead us up to this point. This one's going to be a bit of a doozy. I had to, to play with this quite a bit to make it work. So if you've tried this lab and had trouble, I finally got it at the end. Uh, let's go ahead and just try to tackle it together, see what we can do. All right, so this one was a bit of a beast, so we're just gonna try to dive right into it. Um, so the goal of this lab is we're trying to purchase this elite leather jacket, just like we did in that first lab that we went through, and we're trying to get it for what they consider an unintended price. Um, for us, well, I already know what the price is. That price is basically the cost of a gift card. <laughs> we're gonna try to trick the system into letting us buy this jacket at the same time as we buy a gift card. So if we go and we actually look at this shop here, I'm gonna open up and just you know show the HP history tab. I'm gonna move this over a little bit so we can see a little bit better. Um, and then I'm gonna sign into our account. So under my account, we'll do Wiener Peter. And we can see right away we've got $100 in store credit um, and no valid gift cards currently. But we do have an option here to enter a gift card code if we need to. If we come back home, we can see we've got gift cards that we can purchase right here, and then we've got this leather jacket. And you know what, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger here. And we've got the leather jacket that we want to end up buying. Now we only have $100 store credit, and the jacket costs $1,000, so we're gonna have to get creative with how we pull this off. If we go into this gift card, we can buy a bunch of these, it looks like, because they only cost $10. So I wanna see what it looks like when I add this to my cart. We can see we get a post request against the cart endpoint. And it's got a product ID of two, quantity of one. So let me send this to repeater so that way we have it. I'm just gonna say like add gift card. That's what I'm gonna name this tab here. And so when I send this here, we get a 302 found. And so at this point we should have two gift cards, right? The one that I did earlier and then now sending it in repeater a second time. So going and looking at our cart here, we do see we have a quantity of two currently listed. I'm gonna drop this down. I only need one to really test this checkout flow, but I wanna see what it looks like when I actually go through and perform a checkout. Um, so with that said, actually, one of the other things I wanna look at is when we do a get cart, we see the contents of our cart in here. It shows a gift card for $10, quantity of one. What happens if I send this one to repeater and I just like remove my cookie. Like if I just completely remove my session and I send this over, I'm just curious if we still see anything. No, it tells us our cart is empty. So it definitely appears as if whatever item we add to our cart, that's tied to our user either through like the valid session, maybe through the user ID directly, but there's something on the back end that's saying this user added that item to their cart. It's not something that our browser is just like remembering for us. It's nothing on the client side. Um, and we can verify this by if I reload this page, we still see we've got this item in our cart, even though removing our session cookie um, showed us that the cart was empty. So that's just a good piece of note here, um, or a good thing to note because it helps you kind of like start thinking, well, maybe we can do a, a race condition against this. Um, and where could we potentially try to be racing? Well, one thing that we could try to do is understand the checkout flow and potentially add an item to the cart after we've completed checkout. And so if we go all the way through the checkout process, I'm gonna just say place order here. We see a post request to this cart checkout endpoint and we get a 200 okay. That tells us exactly what we see on this left side. It tells us, hey, your order is on your way you've bought some gift cards. Now you see three different codes here. That's because I've just done you know, this lab a little bit before starting to record. Um, so these are some previous gift card orders. But for this specific order, we have one gift card that we paid $10 for. And we can see that right here. Gift card, $10, quantity of one. Okay, so we see all that in our portal. And I'm gonna send this to repeater as well. And I'm gonna call this one checkout just so we have it. Um, 
with all that said, I don't know if I need this one anymore. I'm going to go and remove that. And I'm going to create us a new tab group. So i got to move this so you guys can see. But I'm going to create this new tab group. And I'm just going to name this like multi endpoint. I'm going to add these two items to it. I'll make the color green. And then we'll move this back. Okay. So now we have this new grouped uh, tabs, or whatever they call it, um, that contains both adding a gift card and performing the checkout. And so let's just look at this right now. If I reload my page, maybe I'll just go to my account here and then come back to the cart. We can see the cart is currently empty, but theoretically, if I were to run this in sequence, we should see first adding the gift card to our cart and then performing the checkout. So I'm going to run this now. And if everything goes well, this checkout will actually go through and we will see, yep, our store credit's now down to $80. We have successfully placed an order for a single gift card. And if you render the page, it might be a little bit more legible here. So yeah, this is exactly what we wanted to see. So we know that adding this gift card and performing the checkout actually worked the way we intended. If you look right below my face here, we can look at like how long these requests took and we can see like this one took significantly longer, 500 milliseconds versus 185 milliseconds. And if we move this here and run this again, all I'm really looking at is now notice the first request still took almost 500 milliseconds where this one took almost 200. And so it seems to be no matter what that first request is always taking longer. And that's a, just an important call out because what that likely tells us is we're dealing with like in the back end architecture, we're dealing with multiple hops where we've got like the first request that reaches out then has to establish connection to some back end server in order to, to continue communicating. And so the second request ends up being a lot faster. Um, we can verify for sure that that's what's happening by adding like a third request here and putting it in the front, like for example, if I were to just say like go to the home page, we get a get request to this slash here. I could send this to repeater. And if I were to add this as our first hop, where we're just saying like, you know, get the root um, and then do add gift cart and then try to check out and we run this here, we'll notice again, the first request almost took 500 milliseconds and then the other two are pretty quick. Like the other two took about 200 milliseconds. So I'm gonna leave this here just in case like warming up the, you know, the request somehow is gonna make a difference in our lab. I'm not sure if it will or not. Um, but just in case, since we are dealing with race conditions, that extra 300 milliseconds of lag may just be something that I wanna kind of like eliminate as a potential reason why things may not work later down the road. Okay. So what we have here is the ability to add a gift card and perform a checkout. But what if I wanted to like perform the checkout and then add an item right afterwards? And so if we come back to our cart, I don't know what we have in it right now. Okay, our cart is empty. Um, what if we were to go ahead and add one gift card? I'm gonna send this to repeater outside of the group. It looks like that actually kept it in the group. It's not really what I wanted. So what I'm gonna do is instead, we'll come back here. Let me say gift card. I'm gonna add to cart. So we have this new post request against the cart. Maybe if I send it to repeater from here. Yeah, notice how it's not green. So this is not a part of this multi endpoint group. I can kind of do like a one off here of, you know, add gift card as needed. So right now our cart should have, looks like it has something in it. We already have a gift card. I'm going to try to run this request again. Um, and basically we're gonna say, perform the checkout of our single gift card that we have in our cart right now. And then immediately after, I'm gonna try to do something crazy, like try to add 10 more gift cards, like after we already paid, see if we can do a race condition to add an additional 10 gift cards right after. Um, and so I just changed the quantity of 10. We're gonna change this to a parallel attack. And let's see if this happens to work. I was testing this earlier and just full disclosure, it was not working out the gate for me. We had to do a lot of uh, poking and prodding here. But let's go look at the checkout. So we can see, okay, looks like we only were able to successfully do a checkout of a single gift card 
probably that first one that was in our cart. So that probably tells me that the add gift card quantity of tin request, this request right here, probably got processed by the server after the checkout completed. So if I reload this page, we're probably gonna see tin cards in our cart here. Let's see, we don't. So that's actually kind of interesting to me. I would have expected this request to have gone through after the checkout and then we would see all those cards here. It's kind of weird that we don't. I'm gonna run this a second time. And let's look at what the checkout. So the checkout came back and said, hey look, we couldn't even perform a checkout, your card is empty. So I'm gonna go back to this add gift card one off. I'm gonna send this again. What that should do is put one card in our account. Aha, weird. Okay, maybe we just had like a weird like cache. Like maybe my browser was just like caching the old page. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but notice how now I have 11 cards. Um, I'm gonna remove all of these. We're going to add just one of them. So I'm gonna use this add gift card quantity of one. So now when I reload my cart, we should see one in here. And then I'm gonna come back to this multi endpoint and I'm going to make sure we send them all in parallel. And again, we're, what we're trying to do is just perform a race condition here where we're, we're checking out with a single card, but we're also immediately afterwards trying to add 10 additional cards into our cart. And if the race condition hits, we'll be able to see a quantity of like 11 cards total that we were able to check out for the price of 10. That's theoretically what we're trying to do. And it doesn't seem to have be, it doesn't seem to be working quite yet. So we're just gonna keep poking at it. So we're gonna come back, let's look at our cart. Right now it's empty. We're gonna add one more. We're gonna re-trigger the race condition here. And it also did not work. So we're gonna add one more card. We're gonna trigger it again. And we're just gonna keep trying and repeating. Aha, check that out, quantity 11. That's exactly what we wanted to see. Now, notice it dropped our store credit down by $90. Uh, looks like it actually forced us to pay 110, even though we only had, before this request, well, we had like $20 worth of store credit. So somehow we, we cheated and we were able to purchase 11 when we didn't have the funds to do so. So that definitely proves, yes, we have a race condition here. The downside is now I'm negative $90, so I probably can't make any more orders. So I'm gonna need to come back to my account and actually like, you know, use and redeem some of these cards here. This may not have been the most efficient way to kind of showcase what I was trying to do, because now I have to actually redeem these to get some money back, but uh, bear with me here. You know what? Okay, so now we're back to $90 worth of store credit and kind of while I was redeeming these, I got an idea of like, what if redeeming these actually had a race condition? <laughs> um, so if we go back to here, we can see that when we redeem a card, it's a post request against this gift card endpoint and it has this gift card, like, um, I don't know, what's it called, redemption code? Um, I'm gonna send this to repeater and I would just be curious to see if when I go to redeem this code, this code has not been redeemed yet. When I redeem this one, I'm just curious what would happen if we were to like issue a ton of these in parallel. And so all of these requests from 209 to 228, I'm gonna add to a group, 209 to 228. I'll make it purple. I'll just call it redeem. So now we've got this new group here, and this is totally outside scope of the, the lab exercise, probably, but I just wanted to see if theoretically it would work. And I'm just gonna say send it in parallel. We'll just see what happens. Theoretically, if there was, okay, yeah, it looks like the second request. Okay, all these end up saying invalid. So like the first one seems to work, then the rest just say invalid. So they seem to be doing something right when it comes to redeeming these gift cards. But this is the type of thinking that you'll want to be doing when you're looking for race conditions. Is like, well, hey, what happens if I just redeem that same code all at once, multiple times? Anyway, it didn't work here, but that's okay. We do already have a race condition in this checkout flow process. So to solve the lab, let's go back and actually do what they want us to do, which is instead of adding 10 gift cards, I'm gonna change this product ID here back to one because the first product you see listed is this leather jacket. 
And when you like go to add this to your cart, if you look at the this here, it's a post request with a product ID of one. So I'm just coming into our add gift card and I'm changing our product ID from two, which is for gift cards, to one, which is for the leather jacket. And I'll just leave quantity of 10. Why not try to get 10 of them? Um, and that's the only change we have to make. So with that made, let's go check and see. Okay, so we have an item in our cart, but we can't afford it. So I'm going to remove it. We're going to need something in our cart, though. Otherwise, remember the checkout page will say, like, hey, there's nothing in your cart. So we're going to add a single gift card because we can't afford a single gift card. So now we should see one gift card in our account for $10. And we're going to come back here and we're going to try to exploit our race condition. Whoa, check that out. We have solved the lab. We were able to purchase a single gift card, but we also were able to purchase 10 of these leather jackets. So that's it. That's how you solve this one. I hope you learned something. If I explained this in a way that help, was helpful for you, taught you something, let me know in the comments. Likewise, if I got something wrong, also let me know. I'm just trying to learn here alongside you guys. And um, yeah, that was it for this one. I had fun. I hope to see you in the next video.